Okay, so I have permission to share this story with you guys. So I'm gonna need some glasses. I'm gonna read this story to you guys, okay? And this is a true story, okay? Uh, so it's called Bobby's story. It's a true story and I have permission to share it with you. It's a story of a woman who has struggled for many, many years. As a little girl, Bobby felt that she was broken, that she was ill-formed, that someone had made a mistake when putting her together. She was weak. At least that's what she believed and what she had been told. She was way too sensitive. Things bothered her too much. She needed to get stronger. She needed to toughen up. She felt fearful most of the time. Fears of things known and unknown. At night when she closed her eyes, scary things would come to her. And if she was able to drift off to sleep, she would often wake up gasping and terrified, unable to breathe. As Bobby grew, she tried to become stronger, to be less impacted by daily living, to be a more functional person. She was a straight A student and excelled at school. She had a few close friends and she studied dance when she wasn't in school. She was the oldest of four children and was essentially the perfect daughter. For anyone who looked from the outside, Bobby was just a quiet, helpful, smart, normal kid. But inside, she always felt like she was standing on the edge of a cliff waiting to fall and into what she didn't know. She always felt like she needed to hold tightly to something, hold on, succeed, be the best, do, 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 but don't think. Thinking would be the end. She was never sure how she knew that, but she did. She could never be alone because alone was too easy to think and that needed to be avoided at all costs. That's when the weakness, the oversensitivity would set in and that could not ever be allowed to happen. Bobby became a young bride. She married at the age of 19 and soon she had a family of her own. By her 27th birthday, she had her fourth child. Looking back, she can't recall much of her 20s. It was simply survival. After the birth of each of the children, she was unable to sleep for months. Every time she would close her eyes, she would see something horrible happen to her newborn. When she did drop from pure exhaustion, she would often wake up to find herself running through her house and sometimes even outside of her home, gasping for air and unable to think. In complete and utter terror of something unknown. She was exhausted most of the time and was simply going through the motions of life instead of living it. She cared for her four children and her husband as she was required in her mind. She needed to do, 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 and be perfect. Bobby never bought a loaf of bread. The family ever, only ever ate homemade. Every evening they had a homemade balanced meal with a homemade dessert on the table. She made all of her children's clothing. She ran a business from her home and she did everything she could think of to be a perfect wife and mother, chasing constantly to find something other than the fear and emptiness she felt most of the time. And to everyone who knew her and her family, that's exactly what she appeared to be until at the age of 28, a friend visited her. During the visit, the friend insisted she call mental health. She couldn't figure out why her friend would even suggest such a ridiculous thing. Her friend pointed out that Bobby had been crying since her arrival. Bobby had been visiting, pouring tea, caring for the children, making cookies, doing all the right things, but apparently with tears pouring down her face. She couldn't understand why her friend would say such a thing. And she touched her face and she felt the moisture. She ran to the washroom to see if it was true. She agreed something wasn't right. And she phoned to make an appointment that afternoon with her friend's help. And her children were the impetus. They were her world. And she knew at that point she needed to fix whatever was wrong for them. 
Bobby met with a psychiatrist and soon realized everybody's grandpa didn't have shock treatments every fall. Everyone's parents didn't need to take little orange pills. It was never discussed as out of the ordinary in her family, and she just assumed it was true of all families and not discussed by any of them. Shock treatments, orange pills, many other things the psychiatrist seemed to find important were the same as going to school or putting on your socks to Bobby. Every day, normal. After talking with her, the doctor said she was experiencing chronic depression and severe anxiety disorder. She wasn't just tired and stressed and having bad dreams. She was very resistant to taking medication. She was terrified of being labeled crazy. What would people think? She was perfect. She did everything exactly right. How could she be nuts? The doctor told her she only needed to do it for six weeks and reminded her that she came for her children. Sometime after she had been taking the medication, Bobby went to the grocery store with her four children. They were aged one, three, five, and seven at that time. This time was different though. This time she managed to get all of the groceries she needed and even toured up and down every aisle at a leisurely pace, as leisurely as one can with four kids. She showed her children the difference between the small eggs and the large eggs, and all of them ewed together at the cow tongue, packaged and ready to be taken to someone's home for consumption. She managed to breathe deeply and evenly, and was even smiling and chatting with the clerk as she loaded all of her groceries on the conveyor, she paid, she took the groceries to the car, she loaded them into the trunk, was able to make sure nothing was left on the cart, loaded all of her children into the car and drove home. She was able to take the children and the groceries all into the house and unpack the groceries. Then she slowly slid down the ball of the kitchen and she wept. This is how it's supposed to be, she thought. This is how normal people live. They don't get only a few groceries at a time. They don't feel their chest constricting and feel unable to breathe as they pay for their groceries, pay, praying the whole time they don't run out of the store before they've completed the interaction. They don't have trouble paying attention to how they load the groceries into the trunk because they're so focused on making sure the children are okay and making sure to remember to breathe. They don't have to leave the groceries in the car for a few hours to make sure they are safe and able to leave the house again once they get home. They're able to get groceries and actually enjoy it. She knew then that she needed medication, that it was the right thing for her and that she was beginning a whole new phase of her life. And I share that story with you because that is my story. I am Bobby. So why hire a person with a disability? Why hire me? Because I can do the job. My disability doesn't impact my ability to do this job. During COVID, um, I went through another really, really rough time and wound up in some really interesting uh, therapy, a magnetic therapy. Um, I my accommodation was I needed a half an hour a day for six weeks to go and get this magnetic therapy. And I'm, I'm well again, things are well. This is my lifetime. This is my disability for life. I've had that now. My baby, who was one when I was medicated, is, will be 33 this year. I am a person with a disability. And I'm a good worker. <laughs>